Now here you are uh, at the the cross section of NFL and extinction, according to those <laughs> according who are to watching. A lot of people. The uh, helmet rule being applied over the first two weeks of the preseason. What are your thoughts on what you're hearing and seeing of what's being called, Dean well, Blandino? Yeah, I, I think it's being over officiated right now, but I think that's by design. They they want the officials to throw flags and so they can get a library together, and that's no different than other point of emphasis fouls that we've had in the past. Preseason fouls are always higher per game. Last five years, you have four more fouls per game in the preseason than you do the regular season, so they do drop. 51 fouls in 33 games, roughly one and a half per game. That's a high number for a specific player safety foul, but I think that that number is going to drop. They're actually having a call today mm -hmm. with the competition committee, which is unfortunate because the two greatest minds in, in sports officiating are here. That's correct. And we're not on that call. Hey, look, but, I'd love to be on that. So what what do you think is being discussed on that call, having been through calls like this before? Yeah, I think I think Al Riveron, my my successor, he's on that call. They're talking about all of the fouls that that have been called, some that weren't, um, how comfortable he feels with how the officials are doing from a consistency standpoint. I think they're getting ready to, to, to put together a tape that'll go out to everyone after the preseason ends just so they can provide more clarity as we go into week one. But, I mean, how, how's that going to work? I mean, some of these – all right, let's take it one step at a time. Did you, when you were the head of NFL refs prior to preseason, say, call more, call more, because I need a library of video? We did. We, 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 were, did. we, we would always say, when in question, throw the flag – because it's easier to tell the official we don't want that called than, than we do want it called. We can always pull it back. So mm -hmm. that happened in 20, 2014. We had the, the points of emphasis with defensive holding. Fouls in the preseason, we were throwing two and a half fouls per game in the preseason for holding. That dropped to under one and a half per game. And, you, and then so you, again, as a former NFL uh, head of NFL refs, would then tell the guys – now it's the regular season, call less? Well, no, we would put the tape together and we would say, here, here are 10 examples of what we want called, what the competition committee wants called. Here are 10 examples of what we don't want called. So we had that li library to, to pull from and then we could show the officials and we're doing that throughout the preseason and then we can show them and, and hopefully regulate you know, where we want that line to be. Dean Blandino, current uh, NFL on Fox Rules Analyst here on the Rich Eisen Show. So... Wouldn't Mike Zimmer know that this has been done before? I mean, he's been around football forever. He's saying that this is going to cost people jobs and the well, playoffs. Would you disagree with that? No, thing? I don't. Look, officiating calls are always, whether it's pass interference or the helmet rule, right. they're always going to impact games. This is a big change, and I think this is a culture change. I think what the NFL is trying to do is they're trying to get the head out of the game, and this is a broad rule the way it's written. And, and I think we're seeing a culture change. When I started in 94, one of the first projects I worked on was a, a hit on defenseless receivers tape. And it had guys like Chuck Cecil and Mark Carrier and, and some of these safeties, and they were just killing people. And if you put that tape on today, I don't think there's anybody that watches football would think that that was okay. And that was acceptable back then. And then in 95, they changed the rule on defenseless players, expanded it. Players had to adjust, and they did. And I think that's what we're seeing now. Well, uh, we had Josh Norman on yesterday, and he's like, adjust how? Because some of these calls that we're seeing in the preseason, these players are just bracing themselves for sure. impact that they're not creating. And we're seeing a flag called on the defender. That's the key. That, and that, so that's how, the how adjustment. That, but how is that even fine to be called now just for the sake of getting tape for a library that will be put out to teams and coaches before the season when it's freaking fans out. I, I think I think where the direction to the game official isn't just throw, it's if you if you see what you think is a foul, typically you tell the official, you gotta be 100% sure to throw the flag. Right. What they tell them is, okay, if you think it's a foul, it's close, throw the flag. That That's all this is. And and Josh's point and Richard Sherman, and, and these guys are thoughtful guys, and, and they get it. But the key is the league put out tape, um, position-specific tapes. I don't know if you've seen them. Head coaches, Mike Vrabel, Doug Marone, Todd Bowles, they, they all did a tape. And what they were saying, and, it, and if you watch these tapes, it's knees bent, pads low, head up. And that's really what they're trying to do. Get you know, the players I, to, I, to keep the head up. Not always possible. And though. that's fine. Not always possible. That's, that, look, uh, I, I told you this backstage. I'll say it here when we're front of microphones in front of everybody. 
is that the Shamarco Thomas hit on David Moore yeah. in preseason week one that was flagged and he was ejected for, that should be out of the game. Those plays are dangerous. It's going to kill somebody, literally. And and I, I think that this if this is all working towards removing that from the game, great. Yeah. But fans who are seeing all the other calls that are confusing is going to lead, despite how many tapes that are being put out there right now, with the way the rule is written, I'm concerned that after the catch rule has now been, in my mind, fixed, and we'll get to that, Dean Blandino, here in the Honda Insider Report shortly, but I'm concerned that after the catch rule is now fixed, we're now going to be sitting here saying, what's a tackle, what's not a tackle? And then whereas the catch rule was just dealing with catches, which doesn't happen on every play, every play involves a tackle. a tackle or involves an attempted one. So how yeah. is how is this going to work? I think I think the goal is to get that that egregious flagrant hit out of the game, and I think the committee and and the league will live with some of these calls that maybe shouldn't be made. That's just part of the growing pains. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like today on this call and the direction they're going to go in is they're going to narrow it down. I think they're going to narrow it down, make it less broad at, at least how it's being applied to where, you know, we talked about maybe it's more the crown of the helmet because a lot of the incidental contact with the helmet is the side of the helmet versus really lowering the head in that traditional spearing posture. So I think they're going to narrow it. I think we're going to see less calls during the regular season. And uh, and again, but it is a culture change, and they're trying to get that that real flagrant hit out of the game. And so just to, I guess, put a button on it here, Dean, because, again, I have the rule as it's written. It's a foul if a player lowers his head to initiate and make contact with his helmet against an opponent. Contact does not have to be an opponent's head or neck area. Lowering the head and initiating contact to an opponent's torso, hips, and lower body, also a foul. So to me, I've never seen somebody try to initiate contact and harm somebody with the side of their helmet. They're not coming in like sort of most of the time somebody no. in the with the side no. of their helmet. No. So to maybe put in the language today, will they put in language today to say crown of helmet? I, I don't because the I, side yeah. of the helmet. If you put it in crown of the helmet, then some of these tackles that we're seeing that are look to be great form tackles. Side is the helmet is to the literally side of the body of the player that they're sure. trying to tackle, and it's that shoulder. But side of the helmet does make contact. Yeah. That if we're somehow codify it to take those out of the flaggable moments. Maybe we've got something. They, they might. I don't know if they're going to change the actual language, but the direction to the game officials, because again, if you initiate with your helmet, then by definition, it's not incidental. And I think that's the hard part for the official in real time. They can see the player lower the head, but did he initiate with the helmet or did he initiate with the shoulder and was the helmet contact incidental? That's kind of where we have to get to from a consistency standpoint. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.